Greetings ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dwyer and welcome back to my real board series. I haven't really done a video like this since December, I think it is, because I wanted to give you guys a little bit of uh, space between all of the videos that I uploaded back then and give you guys some time to digest those. Now today there will be a few changes. Uh, change number one is actually going to be in the form of the stones that I'm going to be using. These are stones that uh, a friend of mine got me for Christmas. Haven't had a chance to use them yet in a real video, I believe. You can see, and I hope I can get these in the shot uh, nicely, but I'm hoping I can get, I think those are in the shot, but you can see that they are indeed flat on one side. I used these briefly on stream a week or two ago, and it actually turned out fairly nice. So hopefully the camera will pick them up very nicely. There's a little bit of uh, trouble last time I tried to use them on, on camera because the white ones weren't really showing up. So if that's the case today, I do apologize. But what we are going to be doing today is we're going to go over a influence game. This game is going to be a real great example of both how to use influence as well as how to deal with influence. It's going to be really classic textbook examples so whether you are a person who's looking to use influence uh, in your own games or if you're actually finding it a little bit difficult to handle influence in your games uh, like to play against someone who's actually developing influence then i think this uh, game is really going to be for you uh, before we actually get to the game itself though i want to highlight uh, one preconception that we have with influence and just get it out of the way completely and that is something like this. Let us say, for the sake of argument, that you have, and yes, I know, that is a San Rensei. Let's say you have a San Rensei here. You might be tempted to say to yourself, great, I have influence. I'm probably going to have a lot of that at the end of the game. The trouble with influence is even if you have something, let's say like this, a lot of the influence isn't going to be in the fact that you got to keep a lot of this. A lot of the value and influence is just the fact that your opponent is gonna to have to waste a lot of stones. Well, not really a waste, but they're gonna to have to spend a lot of moves in order to try to reduce your influence. And that is one way that uh, influence really comes into its own and is really very valuable for us because the more they have to worry about what we're doing, the more they're reducing what we're doing, the more they aren't trying to build territory, and we're going to be seeing examples of this in this game as well. So when I say this is a great example of how to use influence, I am not by any means saying this person's going to build up a huge area and he's going to keep it and it's going to be amazing and oh my god, look at all those points in the middle that he got for himself. It's not going to be quite like that. It's not going to be quite like that at all. Chances are, if you manage to actually play a game like that, where you built up the framework like that, you broke into the middle like that, and you just got all these points, it's not really a testament to how amazing you were, but how asleep your opponent was behind the wheel while you were just like driving your way to victory. And this is not going to be one of those kind of games. But I hope you enjoy it nonetheless. I'm also looking very, very pale in my preview monitor. I hope I can fix that in, in editing. Uh, in case I can't, I assure you, I haven't suddenly turned into a vampire. But all right. Black is Kang Nun Yun in this game. He is a Korean professional nine don. He's playing against Park Young Un, who some of you may have heard before. He is also a Korean professional nine don. Uh, Park, you may have actually heard maybe a little bit more. Um, than Kang, simply because Park was in that era of Yi Cheng Ho when he was kind of falling from grace. All of these aggressive players were like ripping his style down, and Park was one of the ones who was going in and just like fighting him from square one and dethroning the master. He didn't do it by himself, mind you, but he is one of the players who I view as, you know, responsible for Lee having to change his style. So he is not a pushover. Opening we see in the beginning of the game is not something that anyone's going to be surprised to see. I mean, lo and behold, it looks like we're going to be facing an orthodox. Wow, haven't seen that one before. 
Yep, confirmed. That right there is an orthodox. So, how do we handle the orthodox? Well, we play over here, but that is not what white decides to do. White decides to play this way instead, which is usually regarded as a little bit slow. We don't usually enclose here. The reason for that is because of direction of play. We know that our opponent wants to get a move like this onto the board. So he can have his enclosure, extension, and tie up everything nicely. As a result, we usually either do one of two things. We usually split here, like so. Or maybe we even go ahead and approach. Now, he did neither of those things. He said, my enclosure, it's going to be okay. Well, Black says, um, if that's what you want, buddy, you can take the side as much as you feel like. As a result, we see expansion here. Now, we might be tempted to split now. I guess I should actually flip that upside down while I'm doing variations. We might be tempted to actually split here, but the problem with that is we might see something along the lines of this, which would be huge, right? Uh, split, great, but got enclosure for extension and got to solidify it. That's, ooh, that's not good. That's not good at all. So White says, I'm approaching you normally. Let's see what happens. Well, interesting style. Black decides to pincer. Not only pincer, but we're pincering high. All right. We know that White is not going to jump out because there's nothing really here for White if you jump out. Um, those of you who play this kind of variation in your own games, I'm not going to say quit it, but you may want to really think about this very, very hard because it's really difficult to use a shape like this in your own games. Do you know why? Do you? Can you look at that and tell me why? If you looked at that and said something along the lines of, well, because white doesn't get anything while black keeps developing, it's a good reason. If you looked at that and said, well, there's a problem, and that is black can keep expanding, you'd be right, that's a problem. You would be right. That is definitely a problem. I mean, that is not acceptable. That is not acceptable. So you might be tempted to say, well, duh, that's why I'm going to extend up. Stupid. But then you're in a co. Right? So that kind of sucks. So this is usually not regarded as a thing that we actually want to do. Uh, ever. Well, there might be a reason, but generally speaking, that's not going to be a very good uh, result for you. So, we go into a corner instead. And now, we see a game in which white is getting territory, and black is getting a wall. Keep extending over here as black. If we were to actually drop down right here, then we have been bamboozled. Because now white gets to uh, stand up. And there's no pushing and cutting here. So we done goofed. So instead, we're not going to done goof. And we are going to extend again, like so. Our opponent must do so as well. Otherwise, we're going to push and cut. And then not only are you getting influence, but this area is becoming quite large as well. So, all right, not going to allow that. Now, I know what you're thinking. 
You're probably thinking, ah, well, okay, sure, a professional can play this way, but I can't. If I were to play this way, then my opponent is just going to reduce this immediately, and then I'm going to be left with nothing. Not true, because white, in fact, does do that, so we're going to answer your question right now. Person I just made up in my head. As long as you don't do this, you're fine. If you do this, you're in a little bit of trouble, because now, I mean, white could be like, well, I'm going to clamp onto that. And then if you drop down, I'm going to threaten to cut through. And if you cut through, or if you connect, then I'm going to be getting a base. And then if you jump out, I'm going to do likewise. And then, and then I could see why you might not like this Joseki. However, if we don't block and we play here, then those 4C moves go right out the window. So, cool. Now, Sente for white. What do we do? What do we do? We look for large points. And this board, finding a large point is not really all that difficult to do. Because we can be like, uh, enclosure? Extension. All right, we found the large point. Bam. Good move. And black could be like, well, uh, hmm. Time to abandon everything that I was doing because got large point. I guess we're going to have to suddenly turn around and, I don't know, reduce or, I don't know, turn here to try to be, like, solid, whatever that means. I don't know, could invade. But instead, black, black's going to try to keep using that influence. But how? How is he going to keep trying to use that influence? How is he going to use that influence? How, 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 how? How is it possible to keep using that influence here? You know? Any ideas? Someone out there somewhere said cap the stone. I heard you, mystical person. Could cap this, but it's a little bit light. Capping fourth line stone, inviting further fourth line. It's not even sente, arguably. Um, it's just going to kind of be awkward. And it's a little bit too... Uh, what's what I'm looking for? A bit too ambitious. Because if you do this, and let's say your opponent follows you. Let's say your opponent follows you. I, that's... I don't know, we can come in immediately, right? And we can still come in immediately, right? Because, you know, sector line, we can play here. Then what are you going to do? Play here to defend? And then just keep defending? And keep defending? Oh yeah, we're defending like a madman now. Let's say that's not even a weakness. Who cares about the elephant eye? Uh, let's just play... Um, there, I guess? It looks like white's getting more. Left-hand side is huge. This is still undercut. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's great, but... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Literally twice as much? Ooh, that sucks. That's, that's a bummer. Not to mention we ignored huge weak points like this and, you know, coming in there. So that doesn't seem like a terrific notion. Try again. What do we do instead? Oh, jump. Yeah, we could jump. You're right. We could absolutely jump a little bit too small. We're going to face almost the exact same thing. Going to face almost the exact same thing. At this point, we may want to consider asking for handicap because this is clearly not going well at all. We're we're clearly after small things, and by trying to take those small things, we're just like giving large things away. So, new. No. 
Anybody else in the class wish to venture a guess? Your guess was that white gets to play twice. Didn't see that one coming. There we go. If your guess was a shoulder hit, that's actually a pretty damn good guess. Because we're going to shoulder hit the stone for influence. Yeah, shoulder hits. This one is obviously too far away. But this one, it is just right. And you can see that we can kind of link it up pretty easy. Looks good, man. Looks good. So, boom. White responds. We're trying to get all the things. Give me all them things. But white is not asleep at the wheel. White says, I'm reducing you right now. And again, our first response is not going to be defense. Because white's threatening to get a large area too. Okay? So this is where the thing gets a little bit tricky. It's just just a little bit tricky. Just 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 a little for um the influential player. We have to resist that urge to be like, oh, I must defend everything that I was going after right now, otherwise I'll have nothing. No. No, 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 no. He played his stone. Okay. Now let's reduce him as well. So Black says, I'm going to shoulder your other stone. Now I'm kind of putting you behind enemy lines again. So you can't answer this very well, can you? If you make this too strong, then I will grow more powerful than you can possibly imagine. And then Lucas will sue you for copyright. All right, so he jumps up, or he extends up, sorry. But you know which direction the black is going. Kerblam. And again, what are you forcing white to do? You're, th you're trying to force white to be like, defend yourself. So you could be like, two stones again, please. But we're not going to do that. Ooh, we ain't doing that. No, 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 no. We ain't having it. Instead, he's being very, very tricky. Look how tricky he's being. Look how, look how tricky. Because you're kind of inviting black to make that attempt on your life. But this isn't, this is a multi-pronged attack. Because like, these are under attack. And then those would be under attack as well, right? So we have to be careful. Because like, this is actually threatening everything at once. So we've got to be careful. Oops, that's upside down. That's still upside down. There we go. Black says it's okay. Still going after it. What you got? What you got? White says, well, I know this attack. I'm coming for you. Cujo's coming for you. That's not the right stone. We still extend over here. White's like, I'm going to make shape now. It's still aggressive. You have to be careful. Stones here and here are still valuable. However, however, there's one little caveat here. Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Do you see it? Because again, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Someone out there is like, Take the territory. Don't want to do that. Don't want to do that. In terms of territory, believe it or not, we have the enclosure. And if we can get this and something else, we're still going to be fine. We don't need to get all of that. It almost never happens that way. Instead, Black says, I have a new 
target. My target is here. Suddenly this whole thing is working together. Because this move, this move, and this move so far are trying to live, might be able to attack, but keep in mind, we do have Mii for connection. And it's hard to lean on this group up top because there's no like obvious weak point to cut this off. All right, time for white to live. Attacking for profit. We're going to develop that something else now. While white is just trying to live. This is the value of the influence. I like white's idea to try to get the multi-attacks going. But black's attacks are a little bit faster. Borrowing strength, because this stone is not the strongest in the history of ever. Alright. Getting a little bit there. I have a hunch these stones are a little bit too loud. But I hope not. I hope not. Um, okay. Almost missed a stone. So he strengthened and then attacked. White, on the other hand, not keen to just back off, is going to try to counterattack. Because if all of these stones get to like kind of connect up into the middle, then yeah, white's going to be in a lot of trouble. Black plays Hane. White threatens capture. Black threatens capture. And then Hane. This way, you can see we can't really go here because that's an Atari. So maybe we've captured that stone now. If that stone's been captured, we don't need to play it out. We know the sequence is there. Better leave it for later. Maybe there's going to be a... Not a ladder. That's the wrong word. Co. There we go. Maybe there's going to be a co. Maybe there's something else there happening later. No reason to keep playing it. So, time to poke at the middle group. This one was poked until it had to live. This one's poking around as well. In the meantime, we got in a pretty large move. The right side's not doing too terribly, making a few points in the middle. This is kind of what uh, influence winds up doing. Has to play another move just to live. Black see something new here. White ignores, which I thought was a little bit surprising. Um, still do, to be honest. But black can't really extend this because this stone right here would be threatening a double Atari, right? We'd be threatening to go here and double Atari, so that goes here. We can't, we can't play this and then down because that'll be Atari and then you're fine. Um, alternatively, you could play something like this, but that's still threatening the Atari into capture. So there's nothing really here or here. Uh, this isn't really a threat. So White said that he is fine. Black says, I will take area for myself. Looking for Audrey to reduce. If he has to create yet another weak group, that's going to be amazing for for Black. If he's going to have like group, group, and then group, something's dead. Mm. 
White has to go and reduce it again. It's a big area. Black connects because he is preparing to attack. And you can only do that if this is weak. White needs to live. Drops back. White connects up. And he's not being greedy. Well, okay, that's a little bit not true. I can't really say he's not being greedy because he is trying to go after fifth line territory. So, he could have been greedier by trying to immediately cut through this and kill everything. But he's not really being all that greedy right now. Because he's just sort of letting the two stones connect on up while he takes a bunch of territory on the on the, on the on the side of the board. Okay. Guess we're living. And that might live too, it looks like. I have to extend. Connection underneath. But that's Gote, keep in mind. That is Gote, that is Gote. So Black says, all right, I got territory there, lost a little bit in the corner. Um, we can still extend and clamp a little bit later, but time to poke. And white connects. So Black chooses to poke yet again. Threatening a disconnect because we could go poke and extend. White's like, I need more shape. Black's like, poke, and extend. What part of that didn't you understand? No choice but to connect. So we get to poke. Look at the beautiful shape that he has in some of the board. Isn't that glorious? Isn't that glorious? No eyes yet. Black is doing quite the number on them. Taking some points. Defense. Poking again. White decides to get in some uh, sente. Black connects because the poke still exists. White has no choice but to connect now. Black has no choice but to fix himself. Pokes. Connects on up. Still keeping that bottom ter or that uh, yeah that territory over there. Attachment. Look, things are not looking very good, and you can kind of see why, right? We had the group here, but we also had the group over here. That was a big problem. I mean, White has a lot of territory. The territory here, here, and on the uh, here, here, and here are quite nice. Stealing the corner away, quite nice. But maybe this was too early and needed more moves in the middle of the board. Because it would seem that white's in a ton of trouble. And that would never have happened if black was the impatient, greedy player. And when white initially started to reduce him, if he just like immediately responded just to try to take those points and keep them for himself, if he like viewed all of that as solid territory, then none of this interesting game would have occurred. He 
He also probably wouldn't have been a professional. All right, so that's dropping down in what appears to be goat day if he responds one more time. So white says, I will not. I'm going to surround you. And by virtue of surrounding you, maybe you'll die. Trying to get ourselves some eyes. We need to get over to the stone in order to live, it looks like. Black calls no joy. Can't just leave a bunch of stones in the middle of the board. It's about to get away with it. Again, token shape. By shape, I mean there. <laughs> Pushes. Creating a cut point, as we see here. Now, this is actually very, very good because if we try and cut, there's a problem. We can be like, doot, 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 and then we are in trouble because there's like throw ins, and then there's even this move here, throw in, wedging in between because of the different Atari. All right, so we're now going to push a little bit. Threaten to surround. We can maybe poke out and kick out an eye. Whoops. Black connects extremely solidly. White goes in for everything. Black's like, that's fine. You have no eyes yet. I'm just going to connect. I'm not going to do anything uncomplicated. Complication is what you have to do. It's not what I have to do. Plays the cuts. Have to beware though, because that net seems to be a thing. But when we extend, we see that it is not a thing. Because the Hane here might yield a stone, I suppose. We can Atari like so. Atari out like so. Um, now we're trying to get our eyes. Black is still peeping the crap out of them. As we can see here, Knight pokes from this side because now all of those are possibility. Prevents an eye from being formed on top. Prevents connection from up top. So it looks like we still have only one eye from white right now because we can't like do this and also seal off those and get the two eyes in the middle. This I think was a time suji because it doesn't really make sense any other way. Because that Atari obviously is not really working. So we do that. Oops. Um, threatens to go under. Oh, I'm sorry. It's not a time to see what he's trying to do. I see what he's trying to do, potentially. You see what he's trying to do? I was wrong. That is not a time CG at all, is it? That was actually quite brilliant. I missed that one completely. Wow. That is actually quite amazing. Do you see what he's trying to do?
Now check this out. We're now going to play here. We're now going to play here. Because if black connects, then we can get this incente. Because if we connect here, we get this incente because he has to come in here in order to deny us our two eyes, right? So then we play here, and then he connects, and then we play here, and then since this is filled, we take. And that whole sequence, mind you, is riddled with co-threats. So you can see what he's trying to do. You can see what he's trying to do. It's like, I'm going to play here now, beginning my threats. Black says, that's okay, I will fight this co to the bitter end. Sorry, white has to retake. My bad. Wait, what? Yeah. Right? Yes. All right. Now we do threat. Kind of confused on this one. No, never mind. I'm not confused on this one. White is actually upping the co. Holy crap. You can see what he's trying to do. He's starting to go after this whole group over here. White is being a little bit crazy. He's so confident that this is going to go in his way. Wow. Sorry, not that yet. Ah. Sorry, my mind's breaking because this co is actually quite complicated. Oh my god. Threat. Oh man, we're getting so close to the danger zone. Getting so close. Black extends through. It's pretty big. White is going for everything. He's like, that's in trouble, and that's in trouble, and everything's in trouble. Wow, Koreans and their co. Oh, man. That seems a bit ambitious, though, doesn't it? Looks like we're getting potential eye shape here as well. Oh, denied. Well, I guess that's co then. Oops. Black goes underneath, like so. I guess you don't want to die after all. White ups the game. Black says, not, whoops, Black says, not losing that one, sorry. White's like, are you certain, sir? Black's like, yeah, I'm certain, but I'm going to retake that for now. Threatens to go through and kill everything. Now, not so much. Try and live in the corner still. Black pokes out the eye. White retakes. Black connects. Doesn't want to get captured, right? Now 
Now inadvertently we are still looking for our eyes, but it looks like maybe he's finding them slowly. Oops. Keep picking up the wrong stone. Wow. Not used to these new bulls. Alright. So we're picking up some territory here, but black doesn't have a whole lot else. However, that stone, that corner's been completely demolished, so white is actually kind of in the same position. Trying to live up in the corner. Connects, kind of threatening to ruin ice shape here. Connects. Now we've got an eye here and an eye here, so we did in fact live. But that's completely okay, because even though one co has been settled, the other has not. If we connect here, we can just throw in, and then the corner's dead. So, we're in co number two now. And this game was going so almost peacefully. White again goes for everything. Black plays the Atari. White takes. Now at this point in the game, it's really hard to keep in track of who's actually ahead. But that left that uh, side over here is still really, really big, and white's not so much. Who gets territory over here kind of matters. Threaten to cut off. No means no. Looks like white's going in for a kill. Or is he? Looks like he's instead trying to drive. And you can see why. Turning. Turning. Hope someone's read this correctly. Nice little driving here. And once again, threaten to Atari. So we get to kill off the three white stones. White pushes, he's threatening once again to kill a bunch of things. Wait, I think I messed up. I did mess up. Yeah, that wouldn't make any sense. Yeah, he plays here instead. Sorry, that doesn't make sense. Otherwise, yeah, otherwise we connect, black would connect here. And then that's double Atari. And that push through would kill everything. Yeah, that, would, that wouldn't have made sense. That wouldn't have made sense. Sorry. My bad. My bad. It takes Ko. Now we're threatening to kill everything. There we go. Thought we skipped ahead slightly too far. These stones are not very forgiving in their placement. There we go. Take the stone. Good luck with that. Oh my god. Look how close that is. Pushing. That's not the right pushing. There we go. Black cuts. White says no. It's Maji in the top side now. Got some points for black. Now this 
is really interesting because if we if we actually connect that out right now, then we're gonna get a throw in, and the throw in will kill us. So we have no choice but to take the stone. But white says, you know what? That's not large enough right now. I'm going to threaten to revive my two stones because this is like the next largest area that black has. But black pushes. White creates a cut point. Black says, I'm going after everything. White has to try to back off because if we connect, we're going to get completely cut. So it doesn't quite work out that way for white. White says, I'm going to be fine. Black says, really, how's that? White explains about cuts and liberties. If I cut you when you only have two liberties, that's a problem. Black says, you're right, that's a very big problem. I have to, I have to Atari. White says, that's right, you have to Atari, which means I get to connect underneath, as we now see here. Good sacrifice, good sacrifice. And connects under. Black backs off. White takes all of the stones. A lot of captures now. Uh, so right now we've got uh, captures, those were just captured, still some territory over here, the right's not bad, but things like this are going to be making for a very, very big endgame in the future still. Uh, this isn't very large, this is predominantly white source of territory. We got this and a little bit in there. One good sacrifice deserves another. Throw in. Ah, stupid. What are you doing? Take that away. Cut through. Now we have to Atari. Which is pretty big, uh, because now we can deny all territory here and force white to fill and to fill and to take. So it's pretty good. Finally, we go back and cut these stones. Gote, but it's pretty large. White plays here in preparation to get one eye here, so it doesn't have to fill all of these in. Black says, well, not, not Sensei. So I'm going to get this one in first, because that's really, really big. Tari. Tari. Takes. Poking at every last point that we possibly can. Like so. White bends the connection. Now he doesn't have to fill in all of that. Black bends his connection. Now there's some. Uh, now there's some end game here. However, at this point, when you factor in that this is gote for white and sente for black. When you factor in these are not really worth points, when you factor in the only points that white has now are this, Comey, and that, comparatively black has nice upper side. Uh, a couple of points in here. Bottom's worth a little bit, there's captures over there. Black is actually ahead, 
and white throws in the towel. So both players, I think, did really, really well in this game in order to demonstrate how influence is meant to be played. Um, because obviously, I mean, black had like this as a wall and was trying to expand off it. And you can see that white lived there. So not only did white live there, there's actually stones dead. So you might even think, oh, OK, well, that uh, was well, obviously really, really terrible and black made a uh, ton of mistakes, but the truth is that's not really what happened. Uh, the truth is the fact that White had to spend all of these stones that weren't really making points, like all of, none of these stones here uh, made points, those actually died in the process. That's pretty valuable because while White was doing that, Black was taking some territory for himself, White was forced to make some trades that he may not have actually wanted to make in order to keep reducing the things that Black was trying to do. Now obviously it could be argued that in this particular game White was very very aggressive over here. We saw him break in, even saw him threaten to uh, kill the wall, the initial wall, which seemed to be a pretty good idea because he did get some points out of it. But that idea of okay I've got influence, that's great, but I can also shift over here and develop while white, while well, my opponent's like dealing with all of that crap, as he's going around making different groups trying to deal with me, just keep things separated if at all possible, keep threatening to grow or to attack for territory, encouraging him to you know make more weak groups to have to look after. That's pretty much how uh, you should use influence. Shouldn't expect this really huge area to be like all right. All of that's going to be my territory clearly was not the case. Instead, it's more about how many stones are you willing to use to reduce me? And while you're spending all of those stones in the area, well, what can I get elsewhere? There's that little back and forth, that little gamble there. And we saw time and time again that uh, white in fact wound up playing away from the area to try to secure other parts of the board and keep taking territory because he knew that if he was just in that whole reduce 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 mode then his opponent is just going to wind up winning because his opponent is building and building and building while his, while he was just reducing 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 and if you're not making points while your opponent constantly is that's the definition of how you can lose a game so I, I thought this was a really great example of both how to build influence and how to play against it. How you shouldn't expect to make large areas with it, but how you can still profit from it regardless. So I hope you definitely look over this game. Hope you enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed uh, going over it with you guys. And I'll, of course, see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.